Call to order the budget work session for August 2nd, 2017. Um, is Julie here, Miss Holly? No. Okay. Are we doing the presentation? If you want them to, they're ready to. Okay, let's do the um, it, the county fire and what they came up with on their budget first. Yep. Jerome Harvey, County Fire Administration, and I have Jeremy Walla, Fire Service Board Chairman. Using the numbers that were presented to us in the budget by the auditor, we show the reserve being met. We'll continue to be fiscally responsible. Some of our programs that were put in place over a year ago that have been changed, so we have no problem meeting the 18% reserve and are using the numbers that are in the draft three of the budget. Okay, and that's the new one, and we don't have that yet, or we? No, do? that is in the budget in the in the page one of the 2018 budget draft three. Okay, do we have that, Holly? It should be. You guys want to see? Okay. So we have the new one on the county fire. Thank you. It's 211, is it, um, Jerome? Yes, ma'am, 211. Okay, and the numbers are what now? Our numbers, uh, it shows us ex meeting the 18% reserve. Okay, tell me the numbers across the board, like 2018 budget, the 5%. Right, 3000 or $302,380. Okay. 5% factor of 15.119. Miscellaneous revenues of 34600 Case reserves of 67077. Tax revenues of 2015, 822. Maximum tax is the same. Percentage of reserves, 18.78%. It's line item eight. Okay, and this, this says on county fire is below the 18% at year end 2018. The levy dollars cannot sustain the budget at its current level. Either you will need to reduce the budget, increase taxes by an opt out, increase miscellaneous revenues, revenues from a new source or later than 2019. So, what was that solution? I was just using the numbers that the auditor put together for us, and we appreciate that very much. So, with the past couple of weeks we've had here in the county of fire, we appreciate the help. Uh, between that and the uh, being fiscal conservative, being responsible for our money, again, some of our programs will not come to fruition in this uh, budget year, and we will clearly meet this 18% goal. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Yes. If you look at the yellow highlighted line, at the end of 18, he is above the 18%. The comments you were reading okay. were for budget year 19. 20. Okay. So this year he's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for County Fire? The numbers are right up there. Uh, Julie, in this yellow stack, uh, will we find that piece of that page? Second page. Right here, guys. It is. It's the second one. Yeah. Not the whole, just that one line. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just right here. All right. Yeah. This is the most important piece. These two. Okay. That's stored CPI. While we're looking at those, I'd like to do a big thank you to uh, the career firefighters and the uh, volunteer fire departments. You guys have been doing some pretty hard work lately, so we appreciate everything you guys have been doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to, just, if I could, uh, Julie, thank you very much. We've had a rough couple of weeks here. I appreciate you helping us with these numbers and keeping oh. things straight. I do appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you very much, and we, we all do. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oh, we appreciate everything you guys do. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Jeremy, what are all those patches on the left side of your arm? Over here. Side. Uh, there are different uh, qualifications and certifications that I nice. carry. Any questions for County Great Fire? Air conditioning. Yep. Right where we need them to be. That's it. So they're right where they need. We need them to be. Yeah, doing good. Right. Board, any questions for County Fire? One second. No, I don't have any questions, but I do want to appreciate how you guys come together to, to look at your budget. I mean, it was a team effort when you guys were confronted with this and, and you guys took the bull by the horn and sat down and worked through it. And so <clears throat> I appreciate that. All your guys' teamwork, including Julie. So Thank you, thank Julie. You. Hold on just a second. No questions for Fowler? George, are you still looking? No. Okay. Buskard, you good? DeSanto? Good, good. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. All right, <laughs> board. This is the work session. Any questions for Julie or any changes? Okay, Julie, do we use CPI, the growth, and stored all the sort, stored CPI this year? Yeah. That was the, what we used in the provisional as well as the draft three. Okay. So it, so it does use all the stored CPI? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair. Commissioner Lecrae. After, re <clears throat> after reviewing some of the budgets, I had some questions, but I guess I'll give more direction. First, uh, first of all, I want to uh, give a shout out to Nancy Troutman. I went back through her presentation through last year, and that was helpful as far as uh, considering some of the stuff that we're doing. I think sometimes we forget you know, that uh, most of the stuff that the county does are by statute. You know, I think it's 79, almost 80% of the duties we're required to do. Um, so I wanted to shout that out. And uh, also, you know, the county being a service, I see it as more of a service-based uh, job is that we do. We deal with the customers and the service with the people, and our employees are our part of our number one assets. One of the things that I was looking at, what I think we could do, uh, is request of our departments to to look at uh, going through their budgets. And I would like to see them come back with uh, reducing their budget to the point where it covers the cost of the step raises. Uh, there's been some discussion over not the coal, not taking the cola, taking the cola, not the steps, that type of thing. <clears throat> And taking one step for employees after two, 2016. So I think my original motion would be for, one of the things I want to see is I want to see the departments look through their budgets to see if they could do the step raises. They can absorb them? They can absorb them. If they cannot, or they have to reduce services. I want to know what those services are going to be reduced. 
Um, I believe it can be done. You know, we'll, we have turnover rate, we have a little leftover. I think they could look at it. If they feel that they can't, then I think we need to know the reason and what services that will be cut. Uh, the reason why I think this is because I think they're your employees, folks. Um, I think you want to do the best by them. <clears throat> and I think we need to, to look hard at it. If, you, if, if it gets left to, to us to decide, you're probably not going to like it. I, I'd rather give you the option to take a look at that and, and work with your employees one way or another. Some may have to pick up a little extra work duties to, to cover it. That's one of my thoughts. I'd like to hear some of the other commissioners' thoughts on, on that before I guess we make the motion, but. I'm kind of like that, Lloyd, but I'd like to um, have them absorb, if they can see if they can absorb the 1% COLA, and then anybody pre-16 gets the step, so we do not um, end up, you know, hurting that, um, whatever it's called. Doubling up? Yeah. Next year. I'd like to see what that looks like, more than just having them do the two steps. I liked the pre-16 employee with the one step and everybody gets the cola. I, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with that because it keeps the weight compression from going down. There you go. um, and see where the budget comes back at that and then have to decide whether, you know, you know, if you look back through the, the numbers, the county has done a good job of reducing the burden, if I can find it here. You know, in the 2015 budget, the levy would, you know, they saved 3350 You know, the last four years was a $41.30, over 100,000 compression, or savings for the taxpayers. You know, so, you know, if, if the, if these department heads could come back with that, and then if we're shortfalled, we need to do something that that's our just we I think we need to take a hard look at what we need to do to make the difference, because I, we have shown a reduction through 2014 through Julie is that through 2017. 2017. If you're looking at page two of the means of finance. Yeah. So I mean. You know, as I said, we're a service-oriented business, and our employees are the number one part of that. The section he's talking about that's highlighted in yellow, the change in the levy, the um, 2018 budget is using all stored CPI, and if I may clarify with your two suggestions, just a little bit difference is that you want that cut to come from what we levy in taxes. So we would levy less, which would reduce that. Otherwise, we'd be reducing the amount of reserves. Which do you want to reduce when we go through looking at reducing the budgets? We'll cause one of those. If we reduce the budget, we either have to reduce what we're levying in taxes or what we're taking out of reserves. So we'd be reducing the levy, wouldn't we? I need that direction from you. Okay, we need a motion before that direction is... Correct, but that needs to be part of, of the discussion where you want. If we reduce the budget, I think between the two um, wages or st the two steps and the uh, COLA was about a million for general. Okay. And this in the all the drafts, I used this year's growth, this year's CPI, and all stored CPI. So if you go back to the top, that's this line in county general. And so if you reduce the budget without, you're not giving me the full direction whether you want me to use the same amount of reserves, and re, which would mean we would reduce the amount we're taxing, which means we would not use all the stored CPI, 
or if you want me still to use all the stored CPI, current year CPI and growth, then your reserve figure would go down, which would bring your year-end reserve figure up. So when you're thinking about the discussion, I need that direction, which figure you want me to, because it's balanced right now. Buskert, we need some help. <laughs> you, you see I'm which not, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I've never been one to use stored CPI. I, I think we work hard every year to not to use the CPI and all of a sudden there comes a year that says, well, let's use it all this year. And I don't know. And if we have to, I guess you have to, but I'm in favor of not using the stored CPI and if we, uh, and maintaining our cash reserves at 18%. After that, I, that's where I'm at. So if we do the 1% COLA and the pre-16 step, where are we getting it then? Are we doing... What are we reducing on the levy or the? Don't ask me. Tell us. It's for somebody who knows more about numbers than me. If you want to re not use stored CPI, then when we reduce the budgets <coughs> by cost savings or service changes, putting back in the wages, then we would decrease the maximum tax. Right. And I could make that adjustment so we do not use any of the stored CPI but use current and current year growth, which will then change the amount of reserves that we have, which will change column K, which is your year-end reserves. And what will that change it to? Increase. I don't know. We'll see. But will it go up or down? Yes. If we make equal cuts, it'll be neutral and will reduce the amount of max tax and not use... Uh, so your levy wouldn't go up, and depending upon the amount of cuts in comparison to how much we increase this draft, if they make equal cuts, then you're just going to reduce max tax by the amount of the cut. If they reduce more than they put in for steps, then your cash reserve will go up. Is that, is that feasible, do you think, that we can do that? They can do that? I mean, there's no sense saying, here's what we want you to do when, when it's not feasible to do it, you know? I mean, I, you know, well, yeah, probably a tough call. If, if you look at the budget for 18, just just as a... A comparison. In the 2018 budget between Marcy's Law and our 17 or 18 criminal cases, I believe it's about 1.2 million more, just for those two reasons. Mm -hmm. I believe there's an extra million in there for the capital cases on both sides, defense and prosecution, and how much for Marcy's Law? Between two and four hundred thousand, I believe. And, and you know, it, which is about what the wages are, which is about what we're using in stored and, and, CPI. And as cynical as I am, you know, I, I, it'd be very nice if you could explain in the paper to the taxpayers, you're the people who voted for this, and that's why we're doing it. So blame yourself if you don't like the tax increase. And we have no choice on the number of capital uh, cases that know, we have. The ones that voted for all this crap, and. Uh, I asked Mark to uh, keep that. It's included in his state's attorney budget, but to have some indication as to what that additional, which we had to supplement 17 and 16 for. Thank you. And I just wanted to give you the number, which is the Marcy's, what Marcy's law now requires us to do uh, is $335,000 in my budget. So that number what? is something, 335000 So it's... A significant portion, and it's something that I don't believe we can cut at this point. Okay. <laughs> so whether you use stored CPI or some other mechanism, I know you've expressed that since the voters voted for it, uh, they should be willing to fund it. And Pennington County individually voted for it, as did South Dakota as a whole. So. Well, I, I know what the answer is to, from the taxpayers. 
Yes, that's true, but cut, cut it somewhere. You can cut it somewhere else because you got all this fat out there. So cut it somewhere else, but do this. That's the answer, that's the answer you're going to get. I understand. And, and yes, that's what you're always going to get. The counties, because in the last four years we haven't used all the CPI that we could have or um, even all the growth in, in that year that we had that $33 cut, um, we did, you have to cut services. So what you're saying on the budget means of finance page two is if we don't really cut anything, our county consolidated will go up seven dollars and fifty cents, a hundred thousand. So you got a two hundred thousand dollar house, it's gonna cost you fifteen dollars. Fifteen more dollars. Boy, I'm getting more like a Democrat all the time. That's <laughs> seems, pretty, seems pretty cheap. But. Well, and really what's causing the increase, the departments, if you look at it, if we instill the cola and the and the steps because of just Marcy's law and our eight, 17 or 18, I don't know what the number is, between the increase in public defender, the increase in court-appointed attorneys, the increase in witness fees, psych evaluations, contingency fund, and I'm not sure on the state's attorney side how that equated huge, over a million dollars. Just to handle the capital, and that's going to be something that is just not a one year. These capital cases do not go away in one year. And just because Julie said she wasn't sure, we increased our budget by the 57,000 in the witnesses uh, budget. We did not ask for increases in staffing or others, so the bulk of that, we're basically attempting to absorb that Already. with existing staff. Without, well, that will be a challenge. Without giving away any major secrets, uh, are all these cases still going forward? Or is there a chance some of them might go away? Is somebody going to plead guilty and take the chair? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that would be unusual. I will just say that. Okay. Busker needs a break. Five minutes. <laughs> we'll Regain his... I told, you I'm, I told you I'm cynical. <laughs> Madam Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. So Julie, just for a little bit of clarification, I didn't catch all those numbers for the increase. I, I can remember the witness one for the public defenders went up. B35. That was like a million. 1.2? What was it, 1.2? That was for all inclusive. The, um, because of the number of criminal cases, public defender's office numbers went up. If they don't hire additional staff, which they did not request, to if they handle all the criminal cases in-house, means that they will go um, kick their cases to court-appointed attorneys. So that raised, we've never budgeted enough in court-appointed attorneys. We raised witness fees both for the public defender and the state's attorney. We keep those separate, as well as the psych evaluations have never held steady, and there was a large increase in that. Um, and I also, when the public defender can't handle certain cases, that's when it goes to the public advocate contract, and there was a slight increase in that. Public advocate. A big one, a 10% yes. increase. An increase in that because as the public defender can't handle any more cases to keep their caseload down, they kick them to the court appointed attorney and or the public advocate. So of course those have to go up. As, so the combination of all that is over a million dollars. Then with the 335, it's closer to one point. I, I guess where I was going, which is less than the COLA and wages. It's just as Barzo was talking, well, you know, and, and Ron, with these new laws, it seems like that's what really shot up, you know, when we were presented with our budget with 1.25 being short. We actually probably, if, if Marcy's law hadn't been in, in effect and some of these other factors, we actually would have probably came in. Below. Below. We've already absorbed the wages. We've absorbed one or the other. They're, the wages, if you add those two columns up, is, is right around a million dollars, if I recall. 
So, and so we've already made enough cuts and done some absorption to do that in the budgets that you've got because we have more than that in just for those two reasons. I guess that's where I was kind of going at because, you know, a lot of times I struggle. You know, I understand the commission's not, not wanting to take CPI and so forth, and I've been on and don't want to do increases and so forth, but I've also seen some of the after effect when people don't have the political will to, to do what needs to be done on a yearly basis, then five years later a big jump increase has to take place and that's where people really get mad when they get 5%, 6%. If they do 1%, 2% a year, you can manage that into your budget, I believe. But uh, listening to this case, I, I, I think that's the position we're in. I mean, I think uh, quite personally, I, th I think with those increases with the new laws and what's taken effect, I think we, you know, as a service oriented business, I think we need to do what we need to do. Madam Chairman, I just about to get a question for Lloyd. When you were talking about you would be in favor of 1% cost of living raise for the employees, plus a step for the pre-2016 employees. Is that, am I wrong in thinking that the original plan was to give a step on the on January 1st to all the employees, and on and July 1st, another step to the other, the older employees. Is that correct? So when you were saying you wanted give a step to just the older employees, that are you saying that we should give a COLA the first of the year and then a step to the older employees July 1st? Yes. That's all. <coughs> Ms. Hancock was the one with the pre-16, but I'm, I'm in favor of, of the two for the simple fact of service oriented and one's got skipped over, you're still skipping one person you know, the group over, I think. I'm not opposed to to the pre-2016, but I, I want to keep, I would like to see our employees, so we ain't coming back five years from now trying to catch up, because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next year. It, it's, it's easy to sit back and, and cut cost of living. The COLA and STEP say that's, that's the easy cut. Personally, I think we need we should be keeping up on those yearly, one way or another. We should we shouldn't be freezing those. That's my personal opinion, because sooner or later you're going to have to make it up, whether it's through people leaving, and that type of thing. Well, we but can. That was hers. I, I'd like <laughs> to keep. I would like to keep it as is. You know, do the two steps. Keep it. Keep everybody in line. I mean, we've just heard that if it wasn't for these circumstances, we'd actually be under budget. If we could do the steps, we could do the COLA and be all right. Well, I thought but Deb, what was your th idea then? I thought we were gonna, you were thinking about having them absorb it into their budget. I was until about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> because I gave you additional information. Exactly. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, and... <sighs> hmm. So if we if we did the tried, sorry, go ahead, Nick. <laughs> and uh, Nick Strude, HR Director for Pennington County. Let me maybe clarify just for the record, kind of what Ron's question was and how we got to this point. So in the proposal, the department heads were in a separate area. We put together what the cost of a one percent cola would be, and that's one percent wage for our whole scale, which all employees would get. So that's that's one item. And then in there, we had two step increases. One on January 1st, that would go to all employees. And then there was a- They've been here over a year. January 1 is if you've been here over a year. And then the second step was in July. And that- You've been here over a year. 
been here over a year. <laughs> Correct. So if we do one of the steps and we select a, just a group of people, all we're really doing is, is transferring the problem down the road is what you were alluding to, Commissioner LaCroix, because eventually if we don't do the step increases every year, then there will be a group of employees that is hired in a long length of time as a different group of employees and they'll be paid the same. So I, you can't bind future commissions to decisions, but it's this pattern of continual step increases that's going to, is the only way to alleviate this problem long term. Well, there is another way. Okay. And that's not to give them. And that is the other way. Yeah. And I'll play devil's advocate with Lloyd. I understand your thought process on if we keep putting it off, we're going to get hit with it hard later on down the road. But our reserves are down. And if we keep giving raises and our revenues don't increase, then eventually we don't have any money to give the raises, period. And then we have to start really looking at trimming other areas of services if we run out of money. You, you can't you can't just continually keep giving increase in your expenditures if you're not increasing your revenues. I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, eventually, but the rubber's going to meet the road. As but as as a point now, it was it was actually reduced, like, reduced down for the last three years. You know, and sometimes when you don't take that one percent. You know, if you could take the 3% CPI and you choose not to because the growth made, I understand that. But I think we need to, CPI is designed, it's the cost of living raise. I mean, the cost of living, cost of doing business is going up. You know, if, if you're not taking it, then you're hurting yourself because those other cost of services, the paper doesn't keep going down. You know, the paper that you buy for the, Cable don't go down. Internet does. I mean, unless there's competition and there's some, you can get a good deal on a bulk buy, then it goes down for a little while, but then pretty soon they got you and you're buying it, you know. <clears throat> so I understand your, your concept on that. I guess my point is, is you got to keep up. And, and if, you, if you don't, I mean, I think we need to take at least the 1% the cost of living. Yeah, I think we are CPI. Please help yeah. me. The CPI is one percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the very least, take the one, and we're talking if we to to break even, we'd have to take this one percent CPI and stored and stored, right? If the provisional budget you approved used stored CPI as well as it included a cola and two steps for those employees over here a year, so we would uncompress our scale. What we've done in the past when we don't give merits or steps, excuse me, then you compress your scale. So we have employees that have been here three years that are making the same as we hire somebody now. And there is an increase in your revenues every year by growth in CPI. And if the board took the philosophy that growth and stored CPI goes to wage increases before increase in services, we would not get behind. But what happens is we don't do that. Then every five to seven years, or even now, frankly, our scale is only two or three years old, we are losing employees to other not governments, not even but we are losing to other governments that pay higher city and federal, our trained employees, but we're losing them to private enterprise. That tells you at mid-level, Pennington County is not paying to keep its employees. And it costs, employees in Pennington County are not and cannot be trained anywhere else. There's nobody else that does assessments. There's nobody else that does elections. There's nobody else that takes all the, the stress that the motor vehicle girls take, or staff take. There's nobody else that has to prosecute or defend to the level 
that counties do. So these are specialized trained employees that if you lose them, it can take six months to a couple years to retrain them just to do our jobs that we're required to do in statute. That's what happens when you compress your scale and you don't keep up with market. And we're only at mid-level. We're not trying to compete with the higher paid, the city. We're not trying to compete with the federal government. We can't. We can't pay those wages. But it's a philosophy change that the board, I believe, needs to make to pay the people that do the jobs that you set on them to do. So Julie, I don't have the original top form. You were saying we're 1.2 million short. This one? And that was, that included the 1% CPI and the stored CPI? And there was it there. used stored CPI all of this year's it used, this is the provisional, we had included in there the one and a half million for the criminal cases in Marcy's Law, yeah. and we had COLA and STEPS in that. It was a little over 16% and, and uh, with very conservative, reanalyzed estimates on, on revenues. And how much was the stored CPI that you had used in there? Two point one and the one percent and growth of two point six seven percent in growth. So basically Bottom line is all the stored CPI, stored CPI is 2.1. This year's 1%, one. 1 and the growth was 2.67%. Yes. 5.68%. Yes. And we still come up. $1.2 million short. One, two short, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just the top one. There you go. So if, just saying, if we didn't even take the 2.1 or 3.1 stored CPI, this year's CPI, we'd still be, we'd be considerably even short, more short than the 1.2. Correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I mean we pretty much got to take Well, it, it's like your home home budget. There's yeah. two ways to approach it. Increase your revenue or decrease your expenses. Yeah. Decrease your expenses. I mean, that, that's the only two things you can do. We don't think they can absorb it in their budget at COLA 1% and I, one step. I don't have any idea. Are there people you should be asking that? Peoples? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. <clears throat> I just, I'd like to see what that looks like. And then Julie, where those we, cuts would I'll be. I'll ask her a question. Could we get the numbers of, okay, so we, you're, right now you have it all in there. And four. I'm still short. That would reduce the CPI. Okay, so what I'm going to do. What I'd like to see, I'd like to see, at the very least, the steps absorbed through the departments. I don't know, I, I, without going through each and every one to look, see what the, 
what those numbers are, I'm still thinking we're going to still come up. Well, the COLA is 1%. Well, I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking each, we got to absorb that in the original. And each step is what percent, Nick? So 1.25. So I still think 1% COLA, 1.25 step instead of 2.5. I, I don't. I think, in my personal opinion, I'd like to see are you thinking we're both giving I think the departments would have to go back and, and figure out how to give their steps through their budgets and our part is is we make the hard decision that we have to do the one percent to keep up cool. which would also include the stored CPI so I mean because that's the way the budget was prepared was with the the 2.1 and the one percent plus the plus the growth so and we still come up 1.2 short. So when these departments come back with the reduction, we see those numbers that they adjusted to get their steps to, for their employees, there's gonna be additional cuts that we're gonna to have to do. That's my opinion. May I rephrase that? <laughs> <laughs> what I understood you to say is that as a compromise, you want the departments to go back, absorb the steps in their budget, and only use enough stored CPI to pay for the 1% COLA. I thought you had the budget set to where we use the stored 2.1 and the one and the yes. current one percent in order to get and we were still one point two short. Yes. So go I'm, back and absorb the steps and we're paying for cola. And I, use all of it. Yeah, that's okay. that's my thought. Use all of the CPI. I think we're in that position to where we're gonna have to I'd like to see what those numbers are. Okay. Did any see what we have to work with? Is that a, mo is that a motion? 3.67. A motion? That'd be a motion. Do we have a second? We can have we can have a couple different directions. So let's not get stuck on one thing. I mean, we can get. I know what you got to make the motion. Right? I made the motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'm still giving it some thought. <laughs> You're. I'll second for discussion. How about that? Okay. Okay. I this is I think this is the time to give as we talk to Julie some directions on what we'd like to see. And that's one each part. Department. You're asking each department to absorb the one percent cola. No. 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 Steps. Steps. Two steps. So 3.1 percent. Two point. Current steps and storage set, or the two steps. CPI and storage. And no. They're at 762.684. That's the total of the two step column. 422.750 yeah. is the one percent. Well, the 422 we're taking, and they have to suck up the 762. Okay. It's not a bad compromise. Second here. Yeah, like, so in general. That's better than your 10% cold. Plus it reduces their budget. General absorbs. 422. 422. And department's had 762. Okay, what that would do Wow. And realize those are total budget figures. So, but we're only short in county general. Okay. So, on the county general, you would need to take out the one percent. Oh no, we're absorbing the steps. Right. <coughs> If we took out the 348, 629 from general, which is the 1% tax revenue, 
It would lower your levy increase to $3.30. Nice. If you took absorbed, just estimates on the fly. In general, the steps are 671. If we absorb that, got to get my readers in the right spot. That is. 671,792 would actually reduce our levy by 0.70. We're, that's the 1% in, and the budgets are cut by their steps, which means each department would absorb their steps. Nice. which means um, you wouldn't use all of the stored CPI. I can't tell you how much of the stored CPI you would use, but that's what it would do to your levy. And that's what I wanted to cut down as a stored. Yes, either one. Levy. Actually. Whether we ab absorb the 1%, you're using 300 and... Well, do we want to see what that looks I'm only, like? I'm only talking general fund because the other funds will just fall through. Okay. It can be changed. So let's, there's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? Not, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. One no. Okay. No. Madam Chair, like I said, this is just one option. Yeah. If, if somebody's got something else that we want to give direction yep. to. We're just looking. Yeah. Yep. We have a couple of things on here that um, we have requests. Uh, Live Inc., are we moving forward with that? Is there a motion on that? $1,440, Miss Julie. I, I would, yeah, I'd make a motion to deny. Motion to deny. Is second. There a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have Jerry Wright's 25000 for conservation research. Do we have a motion? I'd make a motion to deny as well. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Let's see. We have a recommendation for a speaker control system. Initially leaning towards option two, 16,700, but have some questions to clarify with ABI first. Do we need to bring that forward now or wait till? It's, it's up to the board if you guys are interested in moving forward with that now that you have the proposal. Okay, ABI unit. Um, what's the cost? Six, it's, look at, we're gonna be in close to the $20,000 range. Here's my suggestion, yes. Because we, um, Holly and I were not given any instruction okay. on the contingency fund in 2017 because we were not sure what capital cases we were having and we were running short, we increased our contingency fund from 50000 to 250. Okay. We left it that way in, 200, or in 2018. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> in 2018, we left it. But we won't, because we have increased where we use the majority of the contingency fund, which was for the courts, the Marcy's Law, public defender witnesses, but we left it at 250. Okay. But what you could do is decrease the 250,000 contingency by the need for your control room, okay, and leave it at 230 and increase commissioner's budget by 20,000 now or you can leave them, which leaves what you're levying at zero. I still think the 220 or 230 is sufficient for your contingency. You could wipe it back to 50, even if you want to, which add, would add additional savings to net what you're, what you're adding for your speaker system. Well, and what, I believe we need that control system, guys, yeah. because as you see, it's hard to, do it by a finger or um, being so we in the could middle. do it we could do it that way, mm -hmm. which would be a zero negate. And you would still have in my mind 
enough contingency. We have found the more contingency money you have, the more they ask for. So no bottom, offense. bottom line is the motion would be to reduce the, if we wanted this, the contingency to 230 and to put the 20,000 off or further out of contingency. What? Or further. Or further. I think 250 or 230. I, think 50 with the increase in criminal cases and the court's budget is sufficient. We just haven't had a chance to talk to you okay. about that. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree with what we've used it for? In the past, in the the 50,000 has, 50, has been sufficient in okay. contingency. Okay. For, for now, the motion should be to transfer 20,000 to commission budget. budget and remainder 230 stay in contingency. That'd be my motion. Okay, is there a second? Second for discussion. Okay, there's been a second for discussion. Uh-oh. Second. Mark Vargo, Benton County State's Attorney. You're not I getting just want money. you to be aware <laughs> uh, that contingency, which has normally been sufficient when we're dealing with criminal cases, that in deals in part with overruns, for instance, from public defender conflicts, when our contract with the public advocate uh, they do not take class A, B, and C felonies, so they don't take murders, they don't take manslaughters. Right. Uh, so they're, they're capped out. Um, public Defender's Office just this week had to declare a conflict on our newest homicide case, and we have two, four, five attorneys who are being paid or whatever amount they put into on the capital cases next year. So two for each of the co-defendants that are not represented by the public defender's office, and then one attorney who was hired to assist the public defender's office. I'd be very cautious about where you set that cap because that could be significantly higher than it has been historically. I just want you to be aware of that. Thank you. Madam yes, Chair. That leaves aside the fact that I could, I suppose, ask you to hire me a an assisting lawyer too. Just for the board's additional information, public defender's office went up 215, 138. Court appointed attorneys went up 405,000. ANNs went up 125,000. Public advocate, which is a contract, so regardless of the number it gets, it stays, and that's 23,500 23, witness. Uh, public defender witness went up 100,500 and psych evaluations went up 57,000. That's but where your increase for capital cases went. Wasn't that 1.2 you were talking about? Yeah, it's, yes, it's close. Okay. Oh, and 57,000 in the state's attorney witness budget. Okay. So Those there, were the increases so. for the criminal cases that we tried to cover. Okay. Now, will the 220 still be enough? I'm not in the legal field, I can't tell you, but those are the increases. Yep. And again, to just kind of remind you of where some of these increases come from, the psych evaluations, we all routinely did those at Yankton. So the sheriff bore the cost of transportation, but we were able to send them to a state facility. Yankton is no longer doing that, so both the public defender's office and the state's attorney's office will have to find, or and all court-appointed counsel, in any case where a psych eval is warranted, um, there'll be two people being hired now instead of one. So you'll have a psych eval on each side if there's any kind of dispute. Okay. So that's a change in state government that is having an impact on the county again. Okay. Did, if I may, did that just happen and that's not in the budgets, Mark? No, Kevin? that's the psych eval that you referenced there, Julie. That's the increase. That's the increase. Okay. So it's included. Okay. No, I'm looking for a sheriff. Is there a motion to approve? Is yeah, that? 000. Yes. Okay, I want to make a substitute motion. Okay. I'm, oh, Kevin, I didn't, didn't see you. Is that change in your 2018? And would that be an additional staff member for you that we need to look at and should be looking at now? Okay, well, Mark's collection of transports? N no. Of the change in the, the, the psyche. psyche valves. He said well, from one to two people. It doesn't impact those. Okay. Okay. There's a substitute. I have a substitute motion. Considering that we're asking our departments to go back and find it in their budget to uh, give the steps 
I I can't justify. We're just going to have to make do with the speakers we got, the speaker system we've got. I, I, I think we can handle that. You know, I don't like spending money on our own stuff when we're asking our departments to go back and trim their budget. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? <clears throat> you know, I, I agree with Mark and Theory, but also we're not taking it a step raise either. We're staying the same. Man. You know, this is part of what, what this is for is productivity in order to run a more orderly meeting. I mean, it. There's. I think there's nothing, it's something that's been kicked down the road for a long time. And I, I think they clarified that, you know, I understand Mark's covering his bases, but we've been told it, it's been up there for quite a while. If it had been used quite a bit, contingencies are held pretty safe and restrictive. So, I mean, if it hasn't been used, I think it'd be well put to use what we're, what we're looking at doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked a lot about how the function of the meeting needs to go, and I think that's the first step is it's going that, so I'm not willing to support that motion. Madam Chairman, is this going to do away with our live on all the time mics? No, this will allow each one of you to have a queue in front of you that you will have to push a button if you want to get in the queue to speak and the mics will be off and the, yeah, chair, be off. the chair controls when the mics go on and off. Yes. For sir. some of us who don't know when to shut up, that might be a really good idea. And that's part of the intent of a system like that. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's it's like what the city of Rapid City has for their speaker control system. Makes a better meeting. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. All in favor, say hi. Aye. 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 Hold it. What was the motion? We're on the substitute motion. Oh, this motion. is the, to deny. To deny. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, okay, we're on the substitute motion. to deny. Oh, okay. Okay, let's do that again. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. No. All. Okay, motion failed, so Wait, motion. They, they denied. Denied it. It was a th fail three to two on deny, so now they need to vote on the original motion to approve the 20,000 into the commission. So the motion didn't fail, the motion to Substitute, to substitute motion, my substitute motion failed. Failed. To not spend the money. George and DeSanto. Okay. I was willing to actually push my chair back a little bit so Deb could see Ron in that way. <laughs> I don't think that helps. <laughs> the original motion is to take it out of contingency, reduce to contingency to 230, um, take the 20 out of there. So um, all in favor say aye. Well, no, aye. aye. Vote, vote, vote. Are we voting on, on setting the money aside or going, going ahead with the project? What are we voting on? Right now you're voting to move the money aside. Uh, I have to bring the contract back to the commission for approval. Thank you. This would be an increase to the commissioner's budget by 20000 Yep. Right. Okay. But we're not approving any expenditure. I don't have any of the specific details, okay. no, sir. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Two noes, three ayes. George and DeSanto, no. I don't want to be accused of being a flip-flopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do we have? Additional work sessions. You know, it would resolve a lot of problems if our criminals had just settled their differences by playing Rochambeau. What? <laughs> <laughs> or if the Supreme Court would allow us to have a trial and take them out from behind and shoot them. Like we, <laughs> like we used to do in the Wild West. That would solve a lot of problems. You're now excused from the chair. <laughs> you only That's get, why I don't work in the state's get, attorney's office You anymore. only get two funny comments or crazy comments, then we have to make you sit in the audience. <laughs> All right. Anything else we need to discuss? Do we need another work session? Yes. Yeah. You will because... Um, Though I do have the amount of the, the um, 
steps just to subtract from the budgets okay. in a separate column, I can do that. What the department heads then will have to come back to you is what services they've had to cut. I am not, my direction to them is if I have employees, I'm cutting my, from my budget, my steps. We're not taking cuts from some budget that does not have employees. No. So no. that's pretty simple for me to do. What they need to do is tell you what they've stopped. I don't know how long that will take them. It'll take me a couple days. But yes, once I get it put together, you need another work session unless you want to try and address it between the 5th of September and um, the last meeting in September, what are you the thinking, 21st. Holly? Holly. I'm gone most of August. I'm here back here the last week of August. Okay. Julie, could you, when, they, when you compile that, could you make a, a one-page letter of what, kind of what we discussed? Yep. With the numbers, I mean, the, the. I will send out. You know, the, what I had written down is, you know, as you said, the original budget's got the stored CPI 2.1 and the 1% for this year, and we're taking the, okay. You yep. got all that. What I will send you is this new means of finance which will have it by fund, it has the, it'll show the reduction in budgets, it will show the, um, the amount of tax that we're coming into, the amount of tax that we're using, which will be less the steps, and on the second page, it will show you that levy. And then if they report to me what services, I can combine that into a letter for you. One mem maybe it might be two pages. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, I, if that's what the board, and then you can look at that um, before you set the other meeting, or we can set another work on. session. We should wait until she, when yeah. Julie has the numbers, and each department has the numbers, and they let us know, and then we set a work date. That work for you, Holly. We'll just have to they should be able to do it relatively quickly. They can go back and get it this afternoon. I leave on the 4th and I'm gone until the 14th. If they could have it to me by the 14th, I could have the 15th and get it to you by the 16th because I leave again on the 18th. That would give them a little bit of time and then you could look <coughs> at it and if you want set um, a meeting after the 23rd, I think, is the day I get back of August. So What's that Tuesday? That, last week of that, tw that Tuesday, maybe, Holly? The 29th? Yes. Anybody gone the 29th? I can be gone. I am. I don't know. Let me look. I, won't, I, I will be gone, gone from about the 29th. 17th through the 4th of September. Maybe we just wait until September 5th and do it. And you can have an additional hearing between the 5th and the 21st. Because September, mm -hmm. you go 5 and then 21. Okay. Not oh. on the 19th? No, you're in convention, sir. It will be the 21st. It was, yeah, you're in convention the 18th, 19th, and then commission meeting the 21st. On my birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So what day are we, rec are we suggesting? We'll probably just deal with it all on September 5th. Okay. So and then if we have to, we can schedule something after that. Before approval on the 21st. And you can still have a, if you're going to have a special meeting, you can still have a special meeting after the 21st. The budget doesn't have to be approved until the 30th of September. Okay. And I will be gone until the 14th, so I will send that information out that 15th, 16th, 17th before I leave, which will give you plenty of time. Yeah, to you'll have the numbers mid August. Mm hmm to look at and review. Okay. okay. I, I got one more question. Now, some of our, our matched funds, like 911 emergency management, we, we do matching funds with the, with city, the city. Their revenues the will change and go down. So can we really give that direction to those departments or not? Because then. Sure you can. 
Do we, do we? <laughs> okay. Hi, Dustin Willett, uh, Rapid City Pennington County Emergency Manager. I can tell you the city's in discussions as of this morning even, kind of a very similar thing. Okay. And, and so this is the right time to uh, make those adjustments. Okay. Nothing's set in stone, and there's probably going to be some reductions, at least on emergency management, directed from the city side as well. So okay. whatever direction right. you guys offer, we can, we can work on, we can handle, we can, we can make happen. Yeah. Okay. I just struggle with when you have matching funds 50-50, I'm, I'm kind of... Well, yeah, and, and what we do, if we budget a wrong amount, um, we affect it with the next year. So we don't overbill them, and if you end up approving one of those matching budgets at less than what we're anticipating for revenue, we're not going to bill them their share anyway, so revenue will be less, so it, it evens it out. And, and yeah, we do it on several of them. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Julie? No. Nope. Anybody from the department heads want to speak? <laughs> That's qu they're quiet now. <laughs> I told them to be. The gears are working. All right. I guess motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Buskard, second by DeSanto. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries.